Hey guys, in this video we'll see how we can perform a P2V conversion in Hyper-V using a Sys internals tool called Disk to VHT. Just so you know, this video talks about P2V for Windows operating system only. So what does P2V means? P2V abbreviated as physical to virtual is a process where a physical server is converted as a virtual machine. Now the main objective of P2V is to consolidate the physical servers, especially underutilized servers, and make them run as virtual machines on fewer virtual machine hosts. And then we can decommission or repurpose those physical servers to save the power, rack space, and money. As we are going to focus only on disk to VHT in this video, I'm not going to go too deep and explain more about P2V, how it is done, what are the best practices you need to follow with an usual P2V process. So we have two utilities which are offered by Microsoft. The first one is disk to VHT version 2.01 and the second one is Microsoft Virtual Machine Converter. MVMC version 3.0. Again, in this video, we are going to talk about disk to VHT only. So we now know that disk to VHT is used for P2V migration. Let's see how exactly it does the conversion. So it is a free tool that creates a .VHT, which is a virtual hard disk, or a .VHDX, which is enhanced version of VHT. So it creates VHT or VHDX of disks of physical servers. We can then use these virtual disks to use with virtual machine in Microsoft Hyper-V, System Center Virtual Machine Manager, App Controller, and Microsoft Azure. So the main difference between disk to VHT and other physical to virtual tools is that you can run disk to VHT on a system that is online. So you don't have to shut down the system first to perform a P2V. Now disk to VHT uses Windows volume snapshot capabilities to create a consistent point in time snapshots of the volumes you want to include in your conversion. So what does mean? So this means you can have a latest copy of the data of your volumes. And for each disk on your system, disk to VHT will create a separate VHT or VHDX. Disk to VHT can capture the partitioning information of the disk and copy the data on the volumes. It can also capture just the system volumes and exclude data volumes. So you can even have disk to VHT create VHDs on local volumes, even once being converted. Now the performance will be better when the VHD is on a disk different from the one it is being converted for. For example, if you create a VHD for C drive, then to get better performance, you need to save the VHD on D drive. So from where we can download the disk to VHD? Disk to VHD is a Sys internals tool and you can download it from Microsoft website. So here is the link. And Disk to VHD supports only Windows Vista and higher for client operating system. And for server operating system, it supports Windows Server 2008 and higher. Now Disk to VHD includes uh, command line options that enables you to script the creation of VHD, so it is very useful when you are planning to convert a large number of disks into VHDs or VHDX. So the command line is very simple to figure out. Uh, the following is a quick example wherein C drive is being converted to a VHD and saved in the VHD folder of C drive. Now if you want to convert all the drives, then you just specify asterisk key, I mean the star key as the wildcard for all the drives. So here's my lab setup I have. I have a terminal server, which is a physical server running Windows Server 2008 R2. It only has a, a single drive, which is C drive, and the size of the C drive is 40 gig. So I'm going to run the disk to VHD on this terminal server and convert the C drive as a VHDX. And then I'm going to create a new VM on my Hyper-V host and attach the VHDX to the VM. So we'll then power on the VM and power off the physical server. So here is the step-by-step -step process. First, we are going to download the disk to VHD utility and we are going to run it on a physical server. 
on which you want to convert your disks into VHDX. So we are going to convert the disk into VHDX format and copy it to the Hyper-V host. And then we'll create a new VM without any hard disk on a Hyper-V host and we'll attach the VHDX to it. And then we'll disconnect the network adapter of the physical server to avoid any IP or host name conflict. And then we'll run the new VM and install the integration services. And if everything is up and running, we can power off or decommission the physical server. Okay, so let's start the demo. Okay, so I'm on my Windows Server 2008 R2 server, which is a physical server. So like I said, it's a terminal server. So first thing, I'm going to download the disk to VHD utility from Microsoft TechNet website. I'll click on download disk to VHD and I'll save it on my C drive. All right, let me open up the C drive and I'll unzip it. Okay, so here you can see the exe file. So I'm going to run this as an admin. I'll click agree. So here is the GUI. Now on the right side, you can see you have two options use VHDX and use volume shadow copy. I have them both checked because I would like to convert the disk as VHDX and also use the volume shadow copy to have a transaction consistent version of a disk and not a crash consistent version. Also, I would like to stop the IO on this physical server by disconnecting the network or by stopping the uh, services or application. So, so this is done to ensure that you have the latest copy of your data when a P2V is being done. So here is where you need to specify the VHD or VHDX file name. So I'm going to save this on the C drive. So I'm going to save this in the C drive. But first, let me create a folder in the C drive and I'll name this as VHDX. And I'm going to save this VHDX into the folder that I just created, VHDX. All right, and the type will be VHDX. So the file name will be terminal server C drive. I'll click save. So you can see I only have one drive, which is C drive, which is already selected. And also the system reserved partition is already selected. So if you want the VHD or VHDX to be a bootable disk, then you need to include the boot disk as well as the system reserved partition. So once everything is selected, I'll click create. Now the speed of this conversion will depend on the size of the physical disks or partitions you have selected or the destination location for storing the converted VHD or VHDX files. And if the destination is same as the source, then it will be much slower, which is true in my case. So it is recommended that you specify the destination path to a location other than the volumes that you have selected. In my case, I'm copying it to the drive C, which is okay for the lab purpose. And also because I only have one drive on this physical server. So you can see it is being converted. All right, so it is done. So let me click close. And if I go into VHDX folder, I can see the VHDX and it's around 10 GB in size. Now I'm going to copy this file to a storage location which is accessible to my Hyper-V host. So that would be usually a shared storage. And in Hyper-V, it's nothing but uh, CSV. So let me open up the CSV location from Hyper-V1. Hyper-V01 C$ dollar cluster storage. And I'm going to save this on volume three. I'll create a new folder and I'll call this as terminal server. I'm going to copy this file. All right, the copying is done. And to use this VHDX produced by disk to VHD, I have to create a VM with the desired hardware specifications. And then I'm going to attach the VHDX to the new VM configuration. So on my Hyper-V host, I'm going to create a new VM with the hardware specifications I need. So I'm going to open up Hyper-V manager and I'll click new and I'll click virtual machine. 
I'll click next on the before you begin screen. I'm going to specify a name for my virtual machine and it will be same as the physical server. So this is going to be terminal server and I'm going to store this on my clustered storage. So I'll click on browse and I'll go into C drive cluster storage. And if you remember, we copied the VHDX to volume three and it is inside this folder called terminal server. So I'm going to select this and click select folder. I'll click next and for the generation, I'll specify generation one, which is already selected. So I'm going to click next and for the memory, I'll assign one gig and I'll click next and I'll select the appropriate virtual network for this VM. I'll click next. Now here is the thing. Uh, you have to use the second option, which is use an existing virtual hard disk. So I'm going to click browse and I'm going to go into the location where we save the VHDX. So that should be volume three terminal server. And here is the VHDX file terminal server C drive. I'll select that. I'll click open and I'll click next and you can review the summary and hit finish. And now you can see the new VM created under virtual machines. Before I start this VM, I have to disconnect the physical server from the network to avoid any kind of IP or hostname conflict. So I'm going to go back into my physical server and I'll open up network connections, change adapter settings, right click on the NIC and hit disable. All right, so it's out of the network. So I'm going to come back into Hyper-V manager. Now I'm going to right click on this VM and click start to power on. And I'll right click again and click connect. All right, so you can see it's coming up. If you have more than one disk to attach to this VM, click on settings and uh, click on add hardware and click on the SCSI controller and click add. And then you'll be presented with this screen and you have to click browse and select the VHDX or VHD file that you have. Now remember, a uh, boot drive must be always connected to an IDE controller. And you can also modify any other settings of the virtual machines as desired. All right. Okay, so let's see. It's applying at the computer settings. Now on the first boot, the VM will detect the VM's hardware and automatically installs the drivers if it is present in the image. And if the required drivers are not present, then you have to install them via Hyper-V's integration services. So you can see here the integration services are not installed, which is expected. So I'm going to go back into the virtual machine and a login. All right, so this is good. I can log in. All right, so uh, I'm going to click actions. And I'll click on insert integration services startup disk. All right. I'll click on this link. So it's saying that a previous installation of Hyper-V integration services has been detected. So it's asking me if it is okay to upgrade. So I'll click okay. Okay. So it has been installed successfully. I'm going to click yes to restart. All right, let me log in again. All right, so it looks like I might have to reconfigure the IP because you can see here it's taking the DHCP IP. It's because the old network adapter is no longer detected. So it's going to be the new network adapter, which is Microsoft Hyper-V network adapter. So I'm going to go into properties and I'll Assign the IP again, which is 192.168.10.31 and the gateway and the DNS server. I'll click OK. All right, so this is expected. So like I said, the other network adapter is no longer present in the computer. So the computer is saying that this IP is already taken by the other network adapter. So it's asking me if I want to remove the static IP configuration for the absent adapter. So I'm going to click yes. I'll click OK on this. All right, so if I go back to status, I can see it has taken the new IP. So let me see 
if I can ping my domain controller. Yes, I can. And let me see if I can do a name lookup. This is very good. Terminal server. All right, so everything looks okay. Check your applications and services. And if, and if everything looks good, then come back and decommission or power off your physical server. All right, so there are some other considerations uh, you have to make about uh, disk to VHD. Um, so the first thing is, you know, you should not attach the VHDs on the same system on which you created them if you if you are planning on booting from them. Because if you do that, what Windows will do is Windows will assign the VHD a new disk signature to avoid any kind of collision with the signature of the VHD source disk. Because Windows, it references the disks in the boot configuration database, BCD, by disk signature. So when when that happens when there's a disk signature collision then the VM will fail to locate the boot disk now whenever you are doing a P2V migration of a Windows operating system it is okay for customers with software assurance and full retail copies of Windows XP Vista and 7 but if they are installed by OEM versions then uh, it is not in accordance with Microsoft licensing terms so you have to be aware of it now if you want to use the .vht or .vhtx as an image or template, then you have to make sure you sysprep them and then you also need to make sure that you generalize them when you are doing a sysprep. And the other considerations are you have to test your new VM or even before you start any P2V process, you have to see if your software that runs on the server requires any kind of hardware-based activation uh, because when you do the P2V, it may need the reactivation. And some software may be hardware dependent and it will never run in virtual environment. And if your server is a domain member, you may run into computer name collision. Uh, so what you have to do is you have to remove the VM from the domain. If you are planning to rename the server, you can do that. And then you can attach the server to the network. All right. So I hope this has been helpful. For more videos like this, please subscribe to my channel.